Well, welcome back for part two of our table build. Today, we're going to pull it all together. We're going to uh, do the assembly, tell you a little bit about the finish, and reveal what this table was made for. So, we hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. In this process, all we're going to do is glue the aprons between two legs. Doesn't matter if it's the the two front legs, the two back legs, or the side legs, because um, they're all the same. The, what is important is that the tapers be on the inside, which is where the mortises are. So, but all we do is make sure we have plenty of glue, both in the hole and on the loose tenon, as you see me here, really making sure we've got a good coat of, of glue over the loose tenons. And then um, apply the aprons to the loose tenons in between the two legs. You can see the taper there. And then put it under clamp pressure. Now the other set is done exactly the same way. We won't show this on camera, but it will be done exactly the same way. And then once both of them are dry, now we're going to glue the two together with the other two aprons. You know, this will make our 24 by 24 square table. And again, it's just repeating. It's making sure you have plenty of glue into the loose tenon. And also make sure that there's glue in the mortise itself as well. You can see here I'm putting glue in the mortise. <clears throat> and then spreading it around by, I just use a little screwdriver, but whatever method you have, Q-tip, what have you. And then we continue, make sure the glue is, don't, don't cheat on the glue on this step. Make sure you, that the loose tenon has got an adequate amount of glue. And you can see here it's uh, inserted. And then we'll place an apron down over the loose tenon, continuing to glue up the loose tenons. A lot of this build is repetitive. You do it about four, five, six times, it's the same step. On these steps where you're putting the aprons into the legs, you need to checking it there, you need to make sure that the top of the apron is flush with the top of the leg. That's the one thing. It's, it's difficult to do in this step. You'll see me here in a minute. I uh, have a little difficulty getting the uh, apron to be flush with the, the top of the legs. I am making sure the apron is flush with the top of the legs and then we apply the clamp. It doesn't take a lot of clamping pressure, just enough to pull it together, but again, make sure the apron stays flush. It'll have a tendency to slip a little bit. had more trouble with this side than I did the other, but even had to have some gentle persuasion there. The glue up is complete at this point. We just let it dry. Before I start putting the finish on it, I want to show you how the top will be attached. Now this is a little method that I learned from the New Yankee workshop and all it is is some wooden blocks three quarter by three quarter by about two inches long and we'll drill a hole that wooden block will sit right there on the apron about a oh an eighth of an inch down we'll glue it and screw it to the apron and then there'll be one on each side. And when the top's on, then we can screw it from underneath. So you've got the top held down in four spots by no fancy hardware or anything like that, just a couple of blocks made 
uh, from scrap. And that's what we're going to do now is we're going to make these four blocks and, and attach them. Okay, I have the drill press set up and I've got these little blocks marked where one screw goes on one side and a, another screw goes on an adjacent side. And I'm just going to drill and countersink so that we can attach it to the apron and then also to the top. There you can see we just got a, a countersink. That'll go into the apron and that'll go into the top. Alright, in attaching these, I'm going to use six. I'm going to put two on this side, two on this side, and one in the middle on each of the other sides. And all we're going to do here is apply some glue. We drop it down about an eighth of an inch and that way Got to make sure that the top is pulled down real tight against this. You don't want your block to hold your tabletop off. So if you drop it down about an eighth of an inch or sixteenth, three sixteenths, then it really will help the tabletop to be pulled down tight. All the mill work's done, all the sanding is done. Now I'm going to put a finish on it. <clears throat> and I'm not going to show all this in the video, but uh, on the legs and on the aprons, I want to put a couple of coats of semi gloss polyurethane. But on the top, I'm going to put a couple of coats of sanding sealer. This mahogany is kind of an open grain, and I want to seal that grain up on the top. So I'm going to put a couple of coats of of sanding sealer and then a couple of coats of semi-gloss poly on top of that. I'm just going to brush it on with some foam brushes so I'm not going to show all of that on camera. We're ready to finish it now. I'm ready to put the finishing touch on the table top. And with that, I'm going to show you a little secret that my cousin out in West Texas showed me years and years ago about how to make your finish an A1 finish. Now the finish on this table, it's a, a solid mahogany finish. I've got one coat of sanding sealer on it, three coats of polyurethane. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wet sand it with 600 grit ever so lightly. And, and then we'll put a little paste wax on it and it will be finished and it will be beautiful. Alright, now this last coat of polyurethane has dried for about 30 hours. What we're doing is a little bit of water. 600 grit sandpaper and it's just an ever so slight a pressure with the sandpaper. First time I showed this to somebody they couldn't believe it. That I was putting water on a wood finish. And I don't know about all finishes, but I know this works great 
with lacquer. And it works great with polyurethane. I don't know. I don't know that I've ever done it with uh, shellac. Again, it's not a hard sand. It's 600 grit, wet dry sandpaper. And dry it real good with a nice soft cloth. I'm going to let that dry out for a little while, make sure. In the meantime, we'll attach the top to the leg. I've got the top laying on a real soft sheet to keep it from scratching. Got the table centered up, and the little blocks that we made. It is now time to just fasten it down with those. Remember, we left these little blocks about oh, a sixteenth or an eighth inch under the edge of the apron. It really helps to pull the top down tight. You don't risk the block holding your tabletop up. using some paste wax. This brand is called Tree Wax. It has with canuba in it, or canuba wax, if you will. I've used this product for a long time. Most of you are probably familiar with Johnson's Paste Wax. That's, uh, that's good too. Our wax has dried up and we can just polish it off. I'm not fond of finishing projects. It's my least favorite. I'd rather build. But I have to tell you, that's really a nice finish. Just so smooth. Well, that wraps up our little table build. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, in just a minute, there's going to be a couple of closing photographs that show what this table is used for. But you remember last week, for the last, we had a three-part series on building a checkerboard. Well, the owner of that checkerboard needed a table to put it on. So, this table was custom sized and made to match and go with the chessboard that we built in the last series. So, we hope you enjoyed the build. Again, if you did, like our video, leave us a comment, and subscribe if you're a new channel, LLS. Like, leave us a comment, and subscribe. As always, my social media information is in the description. Love to hear from you. And with that, we appreciate you joining us. And until next time, work safe. And now, some closing photographs. Thanks a lot.